October 21st, 2025. Just as 3i slash ATLAS hits peak solar heat, the exact moment its secret should finally spill into view, Earth goes blind. For six critical weeks, every telescope, radar dish, and orbital eye falls silent in the blinding glare of the sun. This isn't a glitch, it's physics, and it's the perfect cover. If anything wanted to change course unseen, this would be the moment to do it. But before the blackout swallowed the sky, the countdown had already begun, and the numbers were defying reason. The James Webb Space Telescope detected a carbon dioxide to water ratio eight times higher than any comet ever measured. Mars flybys revealed a strange one-sided jet of gas that refused to fade, and spectral maps from Japan's KK Observatory uncovered nickel chemistry that shouldn't exist in nature. The more scientists looked, the less it resembled any comet we've ever cataloged. So the question now isn't what we'll see, it's what we won't during the darkest six weeks of the year. Because when the light comes back in December, we'll know whether this was just another celestial event or the start of something designed to be hidden. Solar glare is absolute. When 3i slash ATLAS slips behind the sun from Earth's perspective, every instrument, optical, infrared, even radar, hits a wall nearly a million miles thick. It's the one part of the sky no technology can penetrate. On October 21st, the geometry locks. New moon, superior conjunction, and a sun object separation under one degree barely twice the sun's width. Even our most sensitive telescopes can't see through that kind of plasma. The solar corona itself becomes a blinding ocean, a million degree haze of charged particles that swallows faint signals whole, trying to observe three I slash A-T-L-A-S. Then is like searching for a candle flame behind a floodlight from a mile away. Even radar, usually immune to optical glare, loses coherence in that maelstrom of magnetized ions. The blackout isn't policy, it's the law of light. October 21st marks the start. October 29th brings perihelion, the closest pass to the sun, when comets normally erupt into gas and dust, revealing their cores. But this time, Earth will see nothing, not a flicker, not a shimmer of reflection. For six full weeks, 3i slash ATLAS will exist only as numbers on paused monitors a ghost in the sun's shadow. And that's what terrifies the observatories most. Because in those six weeks, anything could happen. It could fragment, it could change direction, it could slow down, and no one on Earth would know until it was already over. Before the sky went silent, astronomers raced the clock to lock down every trace of data they could, desperate to catch one final glimpse before the world went blind. What they found wasn't reassuring. It was unprecedented. On September 18th, the James Webb Space Telescope under an emergency observation request from Dr. Melissa Jang, captured 3i slash ATLAS in stunning infrared. The results hit the scientific community like an electric shock. Its spectrum showed carbon dioxide outgassing eight times stronger than water vapor. That ratio shouldn't exist. Comets, even the most exotic ones, are ruled by water. Yet here, carbon dioxide dominated drowning water vapor almost entirely. JWST's sensors also flagged moderate carbon monoxide and faint carbonyl sulfide, gases that form only under specific high temperature, low oxygen conditions. In other words, this thing burned hotter and cleaner than any comet should. Inside NASA, leaked chat logs revealed hesitation. Some argued to classify the data immediately. Others wanted it embargoed. If this object changed course or disintegrated during solar conjunction, they'd have missed their one chance to catch the chemistry that made it different. In the end, Dr. Jang's team won, and Webb stayed locked on the target until the last possible window. What they captured in those final hours is now the only spectral fingerprint we have before the blackout began. Half a world away, Japan's KK Observatory produced its own revelation. Nickel emission lines glowed bright in August and September, far brighter than iron. That's backward. In every known comet, iron dominates. Nickel is trace. But in 3i slash ATLAS, the pattern flipped, like a chemical signature rewritten. Even stranger, the gas wasn't venting randomly. It streamed sunward in a narrow asymmetric plume, an exhaust shape not a tail. Some reviewers dismissed it as calibration error, but the imaging pipeline checked out. No ghosting, no data artifacts. The anomaly was real, and it wasn't symmetrical. KK's team measured the coma, stretching nearly 6,000 kilometers across, 
smooth, steady, almost engineered. Mass loss rates hovered around 150 kilograms per second, yet water trailed at just 40 kilograms per second. Whatever drives 3i slash ATLAS, it isn't sublimating ice, it's something else. Meanwhile, Hubble's July 2nd images confirmed the bizarre geometry. No ragged edges, no jets, no chaotic dust bursts. Instead, a perfect teardrop shape, glowing evenly, an outline so clean that one analyst joked it looked too good for nature. Then came October 3rd. With the sun too close for Earth-based observation, the Mars Express and ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter made their move. Guided by Dr. Nicholas Thomas's CASIS team, both orbiters pivoted toward the comet, snapping rapid-fire frames as it passed just 0.19 astronomical units away. They caught steady, directional outgassing. Not random venting, not flare-ups, but a consistent push toward the sun. ESA's internal notes described a tense standoff. Release the data and ignite public frenzy, or hold it until after perihelion. In the end, transparency won. The findings went public on October 8th, and what they showed confirmed everyone's unease. 3i slash ATLAS wasn't behaving like a frozen wanderer melting in sunlight. It was behaving like something responding to sunlight. Every reading, from Webb's carbon-heavy chemistry to KK's nickel dominance to the Mars flyby asymmetry, pointed to the same conclusion. This object doesn't fit the comet mold. It's too precise, too stable, too strange. These are the receipts, the baseline for every test that will follow. When 3i slash ATLAS finally reemerges in December, any deviation from these fingerprints, any new elements, new trajectories, or energy patterns could mean the object changed either naturally or intentionally. October skies were alive with noise, magnetic storms, auroras, rumors. As the sun erupted in three consecutive coronal mass ejections, the world below lit up in color. Green veils shimmered over Kansas, pink streaks flashed across France, and millions of cameras tilted skyward. But while everyone was chasing beauty, the professionals were chasing clarity. The solar fireworks weren't the problem, geometry was. As 3i slash ATLAS slipped behind the sun, every telescope from James Webb to Vera Rubin went blind. Not from failure, but from celestial alignment. You could have the most advanced sensor ever built, and it still wouldn't pierce a million mile wall of plasma. This wasn't conspiracy. This was celestial mechanics doing what it always does, closing the curtain right when the story reaches its climax. Still, timing is everything, and this timing was perfect. Perfect for something that didn't want to be seen. By mid-October, the blackout had turned into an information vacuum, and nature abhors a vacuum. Forums lit up with amateur astronomers claiming to spot fragments trailing three I slash A T L A S some calling them escorts. A viral thread from Madrid's Isabel Ruiz claimed to see a faint green glow trailing the comet, like a secondary object pacing it. Mainstream scientists were blunt, no confirmation, no evidence. The object was too faint, the data too thin. But behind the scenes, NASA's Minor Planet Center quietly logged every credible observation. Each one carried the same note in its metadata, awaiting reappearance verification. Because if the fragments were real, if 3i slash ATLAS had split, deployed, or changed, that proof would only come after it re-emerged in December. This is where the solar Oberth scenario enters. Imagine, just for a second, that 3i slash ATLAS isn't passive. Imagine it's capable of maneuvering, using the sun itself as a cosmic break. At perihelion, when it skims closest to the sun, its speed peaks near 68 kilometers per second. If anything, anything, fired a controlled burn in the opposite direction, even a tiny one, the effect would multiply exponentially thanks to the Oberth effect. It's a simple equation. Perform a burn when velocity is at its maximum and your energy change is magnified. This is the holy grail of spacecraft mechanics and the reason some scientists quietly call 3i slash ATLAS the solar Oberth test case. Because if it's artificial, that's exactly when it would act, right in the blackout, right when we can't watch. So what happens next? 
every observatory on Earth will measure its reappearance position with absurd precision, down to 10 milliard seconds. That's like spotting a coin from 1,000 kilometers away. If 3i slash ATLAS comes out exactly where predicted, it's over. Physics holds. The solar break theory dies, but if it's even a fraction off, 100 milliard seconds, equivalent to a 10 meters per second velocity change, the world will know something pushed it. Outgassing can't do that. Solar wind pressure can't do that. Only a deliberate maneuver could. The countdown isn't to perihelion anymore. It's to the verdict. When 3i slash ATLAS reappears in early December, the world will find out whether it's just another cosmic rock or the first interstellar visitor that chose to stay. The Vera Rubin Observatory represents the next phase of this story. Before its nightly sweeps, interstellar objects were once-in-a-lifetime discoveries. Now, it's the beginning of a flood. Dozens will be tracked each year. Every orbit, every brightness shift, every chemical ratio meticulously logged. That's how science turns anomalies into patterns. If future visitors follow paths as eerily aligned as 3i slash ATLAS, the probabilities will start to collapse toward one conclusion. This isn't coincidence anymore. Something, or someone, is sending these messengers along the same celestial highway. For now, all eyes are on December. Three interstellar objects in history, one of them acting wrong, and the only proof of its intent will emerge the moment the 